si tomamos una ecuación y la representamos múltiples veces y lo hacemos en, en una pantalla, en un ordenador, pues nos sale una figura. Estoy hablando de la representación de las ecuaciones fractales. Si nosotros cogemos el mundo, lo tomamos con las diversas fuerzas que hay, la grande, la gran, las fuerzas fuertes, y todo eso lo hacemos en un mismo proceso a todas las partículas, electrones, y todas las materias que existen en el universo, podríamos decir, por ejemplo, que un ser humano, una persona, somos un ecuación fractal. Todo lo que sea, pues el proceso del sistema solar donde el mismo, y en definitiva, esta pregunta sería, todo lo que existe en el universo, nosotros podríamos decir que el ser humano es una ecuación fractal. Bueno, esa es una pregunta muy interesante. Ves, creo que el problema aquí es, tú podrías decir que, a nivel más básico, tienes quarks y quarks, y se forman protones y neutrones, y luego se forman protones y neutrones, y luego se forman protones y neutrones, Uh, nuclei, and then you form atoms, and you put the atoms together, and you form uh, uh, molecules, and then you put, and then you produce more and more complicated molecules. If we had the universe's calculator, we could understand it from that point of view. But there is no way, uh, I think, that we will probably ever be able to formulate this this point of view into any kind of uh, mathematical formulation that will produce the whole thing. It, we're just not smart enough. And, and calculators and, and, and even the biggest computers are not powerful enough to do that. Because biology, bi biology is so complex that you have to deal with these things at a biological level, where you basically have another scale at which you try to understand things. Uh, where quarks and electrons and protons and neutrons play as virtually no, no role. And I think that's, that's what we're faced with. You know, in a certain sense, it's the old business. Uh, at one point, we thought there was something called the life force, the life force, and all living things had the life force. But now we know there is no such thing as a life force. The only forces we know of are the forces of physics, and they make a very complicated set of set of molecules, but how they are put together, in fact, tomorrow you'll hear some lectures about how complicated things are, uh, the, the idea that we could ever really understand it from a physics point of view, uh, totally understand it, I think is way out of the question. Uh, you know, there are certain things that you can understand if you, if you take a sub part and you sort of say, well, you want to use thermodynamics to see what the rate of this or the rate of that or things of that nature. That's okay, but you'll never understand, for example, the idea that there could be even uh, any equations of DNA and the way DNA is assembled and how, how, it's, how it transmits information to make new uh, proteins and so on and so forth. That's just too complicated. I would ask my biological friends to <laughs> see if they either agree or disagree. Bueno, ya como tenemos otra conferencia vamos a cortar la, las preguntas porque nos podríamos llevar todo el tiempo que quisiéramos con el profesor Friedman. Darle las gracias y bienvenido y que ha sido un orgullo que te